basically, uh, Sharia is something uh, that is uh, close to my heart because uh, by profession, I'm the Sharia scholar advising a number of clients throughout uh, the entire world. And one of our newest clients is Hello Gold, the first Sharia compliant uh, coin or token, which we have endorsed a few months ago. And we look forward to have more and more products on the crypto, on the blockchain, on the smart technology to be endorsed as Sharia compliant. Because you know why? We have been here listening to many speakers. We have to be inclusive. We have to open up the whole industry to be not exclusive, but to be able to interact and to embed with uh, everyone uh, on this planet. And perhaps Sharia is the uh, new entrant to most of you to consider how the Sharia can work together to make your products, your sub-products, your upstream and downstream services and products are compatible to something that the Muslim at large would like to be part of the whole uh, industry. So I have a few slides uh, to go through. Uh, basically, okay. uh, so this is uh, some of the table of content uh, that we have to go through. How many advisors? It's my own uh, company. I set up the company, uh, what, 12 years ago, based in KL, Kuala Lumpur, and Dubai, and some other uh, countries around the globe. So we do uh, what we are best at, to look into the Sharia principle vis-a-vis -vis financial products, and nowadays smart technology. And I'm personally uh, very interested and very keen to look into in and out of the technology. And we are now working with uh, Ethereum to provide the Sharia white paper Hopefully, we can launch the white paper in the next few weeks, if not, uh, you know, a few days, to make sure that we have something to contribute and to share the Sharia high-level micro perspective on this technology and how could this product can be enrolled by beyond, you know, uh, uh, beyond a specific uh, segment of the client and the market. Uh, so this is some of the what we do in the past 12 years. This is our Sharia board scholars. Uh, we have uh, engaged uh, reputable uh, people from across the world to give the endorsement. You know why? Because whenever it is endorsed by a group of scholars who are well recognized in internationally, the product could be received uh, without any you know, uh, hesitation and without any fear or any uh, dispute by the uh, world community. Um, this is what we do. Uh, I will skip some of the issues, uh, perhaps not relevant to you, but you can see from the, from the slide, uh, we do uh, almost everything, product development, uh, enhancement, and audit to make sure that whatever we endorse is taken all the way through until the end of the day to sustain the Sharia compliant feature of the product. Uh, this is a finance asset, 2.3 trillion, very small uh, industry, but growing uh, at the CAGR 20% uh, a year, then going to grow bigger and bigger. And hopefully, with the technology, the smart technology, with the big data, with the you know, uh, artificial intelligence and the blockchain, will push further the, the, the industry further because it is now become borderless and everyone can participate both who are bankable and both who are not unbankable. Uh, many Muslims around the globe, they are, not unbank they are not bankable, so they need smart technology to be part of the whole industry. And this is the revolution we are looking into. Muslims in Indonesia and other parts of the world, they have the desire to be part of the system, but they can't because they are not bankable as yet. But the smart technology, we have seen that happening around the globe, can push up the market share of this industry, hopefully in the next five to 10 years, and we can achieve uh, a higher market share of the financial assets of the world. Uh, some of the numbers you might be interested to know, where is Islamic finance at the moment, uh, in both Islamic countries, and also non-Islamic countries in UK, in United Kingdom, uh, in Hong Kong, South Africa, uh, in Europe, uh, we have some spot of the activities uh, happening around the globe. Uh, but not on the blockchain as yet, on the bond and the fund and the banking and the, you know, all the sophisticated products, uh, purely financial in nature. Um, 
So what he says is finance. Uh, I try to make it simple for everyone. He said finance is basically a system which is based on transparency, based on traceability, and away from the interest or feel like the usury uh, component of the financial products. Because that is the very uh, first prohibition under Islamic finance. We cannot charge interest on money lent out because money has no value. We need money to exchange, to buy goods and services. Of course, if everything is free of charge in this world, there's no value for money from the Sharia perspective. We need money to simply buy and, you know, and pay for our needs in the society. So this is the whole idea, but to impose a premium on the money lent out is something that, uh, which is not permissible, not only under Islamic perspective, but under the other religion as well, because it is very much giving something which is beyond the whole meaning of medium of exchange. The second element uh, is about uncertainty, and this is very important for the blockchain and the and cryptos because it can help to fight against anything which is dubious, which is not clear enough, which is uncertain, which is not up to the standard to make sure that it's finance is beyond uh, any issues of uncertainty. Uh, and the third is very much gambling or you like a uh, game of chance. We have to put aside any products, any uh, transaction, which is very much, uh, you know, based on a game of luck, a game of chance at the end of the day. You have to be real in your economic activities. You have to put the money uh, in real economy to generate wealth for the whole society. You cannot simply go to the bank, put the money in the bank, and expect to be rewarded by putting the money in the bank or by simply putting the money in the casino or what have you. So this is something that Islam would not be uh, uh, you know, tolerant with because this is not only uh, not good from the ethical perspective, it does not help to grow the economy in the long term. Next, please. So, cryptos. So, we were, um, I'm also a scholar for the last 25 years. I didn't hear anything about cryptos, but I was part of the, the other group of scholars in the world. We were astonished to see how the world has responded to the if you like, the blockchain revolution at any point in time. And we were uh, invited uh, by default, not by design though, to look into what would be the Sharia aspect of these cryptos. And I started doing my own research, uh, attending so many seminar conferences, try to understand what is basically cryptos uh, is all about. And uh, I have given many lectures and what have you. The rest is history. And uh, Virgil called me up and invite our money to be part of the consultant to put the Sharia mindset, to look into the Ethereum Foundation, the smart contract, and the Ether at the end of the day to see how to make everything compatible to the Sharia principle so that everyone in this world can be part of the whole revolution of cryptos. And we are very excited. We are at the end of the journey. And perhaps in the next few weeks, we can share the white paper that we have worked together uh, Amani, uh, Virgil, and Atif Yaakob, one of the good friends, supporting us all the way to make sure that the paper is ready for the consumption of the whole community. Of course, under crypto, there are three issues. Uh, currency, which is the most debatable issue at the moment. Uh, the commodity, whether it is a commodity or token of utility, or just neither. So uh, we, ha we, ha we are putting our own thought, our own process, and we have discussed for each and every aspect of it, whether it is a currency, or which is a commodity, or which is neither. Personally speaking, if I can share with you my point of view, I would argue that cryptos, subject to the technical uh, compliance in terms of uh, uh, cryptography and blockchain and high standard of the technology, they are not currency in nature, but they are a good medium of exchange, not amounting to currency. So this is my personal point of view, which I'm trying to argue and put it in many other seminars and conferences. And uh, I'm very uh, friendly to the cryptos. Uh, hopefully, that will be the new digital currency in the future. Next. This is important slide. I think you can take away this slide with you. This is what I'm trying to say uh, and to share with you 
Sharia is very close to cryptos and the blockchain because Sharia Islam in general is based on five important vertical, uh, the decentralized. We don't have centralized system even for the interpretation. We don't have one common institution to dictate. We open up the freedom of expression. Safety and security, we try to help to protect the interests and the rights of the people at the end of the day. Change of data, perhaps, again, you are not aware of. Uh, in Islamic history, from for the last 1,400 years ago, we don't have blockchain by then, of course. We don't have the data, we have the technology, but we have used the change to reinforce the security of data. So we have many, many transmitters, they have to transmit the knowledge from one person to another, and that quality of transmitter should be reinforced by the number, the quality of notes, if you like, in the current time. They call notes, but in the past, we call transmitters of the knowledge and the data. And uh, they are immutable, and uh, fairness and transparent. These are the four five vertical of Shara compliant perspective, and it perfectly, you know, um, suit the, the whole architecture and algorithm of blockchain and uh, smart technology to a large extent. Status of ITER, I will skip this one. Um, basically, uh, uh, we are putting the right, uh, the final conclusion on ITER. Uh, we are uh, finalizing the research and we are very much, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, saying that ITER is a Sharia compliant token that can be used for many other transactions, but we have to share with, with you and with the whole community the basis of our uh, argument. And next, uh, I will skip this one, okay. Uh, is it Shara compliant? We have to wait for that, <laughs> okay. Otherwise, uh, there's no more uh, fun to share in the next few weeks. Uh, and uh, smart contract, I'm very intrigued that smart contract is very Shara compliant. I can say it now, I can share with you now. Smart contract is very much Shara compliant. I'm very, very happy to see that because it has all the vertical and features to make sure it is Shara compliant. And uh, provided, um, uh, you know, we have to uh, exclude uh, the purpose, the sector and the features which are not Shara compliant like all the uh, alcohol and non-halal food and so on and so forth. Uh, this is something that you cannot run away. We have to stick to that sector which is prohibitive, but the rest, uh, other than these three, four, five restricted sectors, the rest should be Shara compliant and acceptable. And the last one, Fizi, would be, um, this is something, the debate at the moment, uh, uh, proof of work, which is not the issue, uh, proof of stake, uh, we are almost there. Personally speaking, not to quote my other Sharia board scholars, I would personally argue proof of stake is not only Sharia compliant, but it is the best way of doing things to make sure we can cut costs, it can give more efficiency to the whole system, and we hope that proof of stake will be a new technology to support the whole industry. With that, I would like to thank you very much. Okay. And um, I would like to end my presentation by quoting the Martin, Luther, Martin Luther King when he was saying, there's always the right time to do what is right, and the time is right to do Sharia and cryptos. Thank you very much. Yeah, more than happy to take easy question only. Hello. Thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us about this topic. It's very fascinating. Um, one question I do have, you quickly mentioned it. So proof of stake is inherently some type of form of getting interest on your investment. So if the whole system would rely on such a um, consensus algorithm, would that inherently make Ether non-Sharia compliant? And would you still consider smart ca contracts therefore to be Sharia compliant? Thank you. Yeah. It is very much Sharia compliant because it adds the, and enhances the value of the whole system, uh, cheaper, faster, quicker, and safer, if you like. And anything that can lead to that uh, high level of satisfaction, that is, should be Sharia compliant. Remember my slide just now? We have to avoid three things only. Interest or usury, uh, gambling or uncertainty. And the rest is a free world for everyone to do. As simple as that. Hi, sir. 
How do you determine whether the ether is a commodity or is a currency? Could you please elaborate on your um, yeah. analysis? Definitely, uh, from my perspective, it is not a currency. It is not a commodity. It is a new way of doing things. It's a medium of exchange, but not amounting to currency as I speak at the moment. So it's very unique because it has all the features of currency medium of exchange, store of value, unit measurement, and what have you. But it might, like, it might lack some of the element of it. So at the end of the day, it might not be harmful to use ether as a currency uh, acceptable to the community, uh, given any community in the world. So this is my very much Sharia compliant uh, way of looking at ether as we speak. Yeah. Please. And uh, sorry, uh, I think you are managing. Or? Uh, yes. Yeah, sorry, I have to follow the... Oh, okay, um, so you had a slide about this, but I was wondering if you could elaborate more on the principles you said of like the crypto community, the things that we value that overlap with some of the things that you talked about. You had like the five things on the slide. Yeah. Yeah, could you talk a little more, more about that? Sure, but we need one hour for that. I mean, okay. <laughs> uh, basically, we are more than happy to put that in our slide. Let, uh, I mean, email or whatever after this because it needs very much a substantive discussion because the five vertical just now. Uh, because these are the very fundamental of Sharia and how blockchain suit the Sharia. Not the other way around, though. This is from the very first day of Sharia, 1,400 years ago. These are the vertical of the financial dealing in Sharia. It is about transparency, it's about uh, you know, the proof of security and, and what have you. So they, I'm very delighted to see how the blockchain comes and how the crypto comes to reinforce this kind of five vertical of the uh, Sharia uh, financial uh, algorithm for the past how many years or centuries. But I don't think I can go through because it will take some time. I don't want to take other speakers' time if you allow me to say that. Thank you. One quick question following up on for those of us who, very interesting topic, thank you, by the way. Thank you. Really well presented. Um, I appreciate that. Um, for proof of stake where it's sort of considered a good community reward that does something very useful, can you just, it would be really helpful to those of us who don't have the nuance on what bad interest is because people call the proof of stake reward interest in yeah. the Western systems. And so what is like a bad interest that would have made it like not allowed in regular. Counties. Okay. Interestingly, I was uh, being engaged by some other colleagues, someone uh, in the in the fraternity, and I have gone through the disc the discussion. I don't think it's interest from the Sharia point of view. It is. It might not. It might call interest, but interest has many meanings in the financial machinery. They call carried interest. They call uh, you know uh, 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 many other things interest, but they are not clinically, from the clinical definition, interest from Sharon perspective, because it's not a guaranteed uh, amount of money given to your stake in the, in the platform, number one. Number two, uh, you are coming as a membership, so it's kind of membership kind of structure, and you might have some reward for taking that risk uh, initially, so, and move and on and on. At the end of the day, I can sum up uh, with confidence, for me personally, this is not an interest, and this is away from interest, and this is something, a smart way of doing to, to cut costs and to make sure that the proof of stake is the, fo the, the way forward to, to enable. But don't worry about the interest. Interest has been used for many other things which is not interest in essence, even in the financial world at the moment. Thank you. Two, two more questions. Okay. Hi, thanks. Um, throughout your process of trying to achieve compliance, where have been, where were the biggest hurdles throughout the entire process of you trying to achieve compliance and ensure compliance? Okay. From a Sharia perspective, where have like where were the biggest hurdles? You know, where were where the biggest problems be? and the biggest problems in trying to get to compliance. a solution? Yeah, from your yeah. From uh, your. I think we have to see whether uh, it has all the features of whatever you mentioned. No uh, uh, issue of. Uh, 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 interest and, 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 and gambling and uncertainty, everything should be transparent. And the purpose of you issuing any token should be Shara compliant. I mean, uh, in Islam, we have certain uh, prohibitive sectors like uh, tobacco, sorry <laughs> you know, for some of you, uh, you know, the, 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 the weaponry, 
uh, the, the, the liquor and what have you. So we have to respect that kind of uh, sector and then the rest we can uh, roll out the, the, the technology without any problem. You, you mentioned that you consider Ether a medium exchange but not a currency. Uh, I'm a bit confused how, how it would be considered a medium exchange but not a currency. Uh, yeah. I think one of the points you made is that it's not globally accepted yeah. as a currency and thus not a currency. But making a, if a currency is only used with one, one nation or one community, that doesn't disqualify it as currency. currency. Yeah, I think I would, I would agree to that point of view because to, to be deemed as currency, it should be accepted by the whole community. But uh, at the moment, it is not the case. It is a currency within the group, and that is good enough because we can use the, uh, you know, the Ether on the Ethereum platform to buy and sell. It is good enough to transact and to behave like one, which is not necessarily a currency. From Shara's perspective, it doesn't matter either way. You call it currency or you call it a token of utility. As long as it can serve the purpose for you to buy and sell goods, is good enough uh, and from, from that perspective. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I got one. So I'm talking with the, with, the, with the proof of stake research team and they want to know, hypothetically, if there were zero rewards and there was only transaction fees, would that improve um, proof of stake in relation to Sharia compliance? I'm neutral on that. That's ex yes. Thank you.